What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 33 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. I don't know how I keep fucking this up. 33 sounds wrong. That sounds like a well, lot of episodes. because you're breaking your brain by going the first ever No, I got that part down. That's easy. That's really easy. Let me try it. Can I try it? Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome to the first episode. Nope. See, I can't do it either. Oh, God damn first it, ever man. episode of Kevin eating a scone off of a desk. As always, is something that I can I'm watch Tim Gaze. Right I'm, I'm joined by one half of the coolest dudes in video games, Colin Moriarty. It's your boy. And Nick. Jesus. Nick Scarpino. You know, and because we have no choice. Mm-hmm. You Nick literally Scarpino. have plenty of choices. You don't need to include me on this show. You I could, wanted you to be here. No, I respect that. But also, I, I'm not going to get butt hurt if you guys want to actually bring in someone who knows about games. Because you know I just end up sitting here talking shit about Kevin. That's all you, you do. It adds right. a nice little spice to this show. I want everyone to know that before we started this show, Kevin was legitimately eating a freshly baked chocolate chip scone off of the desk that holds the soundboard. He didn't brought there was no paper towels and he didn't want to dirty a plate. Shut Kevin, I'm talking. He didn't want to dirty a plate. <laughs> so he put the scone directly on the desk. Now, Colin didn't see that, and I had two choices at this point. I could have easily just let it go, but I brought it to Colin's attention, and now Colin is fixated on it. So we made Kevin go get a plate. Colin wasn't fixated on it. You were fixated on it. Yeah, Colin it was, really had she, nothing to do except he looked here, said one sentence like, of disapproval, yeah. and then like, Nick just didn't yeah, stop talking Colin, about it. Like, oh, absolutely. And then you were No, like, you don't understand Colin. See, going? you're not as close to Colin as I am. That bothered him. And it was starting to wear on his psyche. And had you not gotten it, he's still worried about it. He's going to probably spray that down when we leave so the ants don't get to it. I'm just, we just got an ant problem. You know, like, it's just the nature. It, we live in a clean apartment, but they're just, they just find a they way. They come marching in they, one well, by yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Right, what, what, what was the line from Jurassic Park? Uh, nature uh, finds a way. Was that what it was? That was. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. good. Uh, 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 nature. Uh, uh, finds a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God damn. <laughs> They're like, great. Take, take the good take there. Yeah, cut. We, uh, we got it. Uh, cut. Uh, oh, cut. man. All right. So you guys are probably wondering why the other half of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller, mm. is not here. Great. And he's not because we're in San Francisco. He's in L.A. doing what's called the Metal Gear Solid Five boot camp. I'm seeing it referred to. On the internet? Yeah, that's what makes you happy. Yeah, I don't know. That's what they're calling it. Yeah. But it, essentially, it's just the Metal Gear Solid Five review extravaganza thing where they get all the different outlets to go down and play the game. Yeah, they get a lot of outlets, out. a lot of media influencers, a lot of just fun, like... What's cool is I, I think they... they uh, uh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know what you do. I, 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 I see the thing is your, your attention got drawn to Kevin. Now I want to make fun of Kevin again, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just like I saw Kevin playing with my one of my my microfiber cloths, and I don't take kindly to that. Oh, he was gonna clean the crumbs up with it. You were, weren't you? And that no, was the I thing. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's in this space. In this space, I gotta clean it later. All, All right. right. Uh, good lord. Okay, so great. So they invited a big, a good mix of media outlets and then influencers and just fans, like big fans from blogs and things like that, that are yeah. just huge Metal Gear fans to so. play a lot of the games. So um, what Greg's doing is he's going to be playing pretty much a week's worth of Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah. And we are doing an insane thing like we've never done before where he's going to be doing a Let's Play every day of this game for two weeks, including weekends. So it's like there's this whole crazy schedule. Is that not right? I think it is. It's accurate probably. Like I said, yeah. Schedule. We're probably generating Either, the word you're looking for. Either way, I'm pretty sure. Like We're getting at least 10. Right? Let, there's a lot of Let's Plays. A lot of right? Let's Plays. Lots of damn Let's Plays are happening. Lots of Metal Gear content. I can guarantee you at least 10 Metal Gear contents. Yeah, overall. I mean, also, uh, no spoilers. You know, once the game comes out, we're going to be, Greg will be probably exclusively streaming Metal Gear until we yank him off of his PS4 and make him go to bed or force feed him something. Greg eat. just can't play a game. So, of course, he's going to be he's gonna be streaming it until until the cows come home. Yeah. There'll but probably at that point, be the a game... meet and greet involved. Yeah, somehow. he'll have a meet and greet during the In Afghanistan stream. in the game. <laughs> it's like he'll have everyone come and meet him in the in mother base. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's really cool. I'm really excited for it because obviously I'm really excited for this game. Mm-hmm. I wish I was there with him right now. Um, instead, I'm here watching Portillo sniff around. For Portillo, party! Sure, what he's doing? He's <laughs> sniffing the crumbs that were no doubt dropped by cookies that came off of Kevin's shirt. Am I correct? Nope. Yeah, Kevin's shirt's pretty crummy. I'll Kevin, tell you that much. do you would you take Portillo. offense if I called you the Cookie Monster from now on? It's a cool name. No, I would not. Cool. Cook, but cookie like an internet cookie. You know what yeah. I mean? We're like, no, you're, I, like if I looked through your cookies, I'd be horrified. Mind. Like you're a monster. So this episode, 
is sponsored by Volume, a nice. stealth game coming out. Oh, it's already out. It's out. August 18th. So it's on PS4. It's coming soon to Vita. Yeah, in the coming weeks to Vita, according yeah. to Mike Bithel. We got PC and Mac. Gotta, gotta, gotta From the creator that. of Thomas Was Alone, Mike Bithel, friend of the show. Uh, volume Big combines Mike. a core story starring Andy Serkis and Danny Wallace with an editor that lets you make and play content as part of a community of stealth game fans. For more information, follow at Volume Game on Twitter. And once again, you tweet at Volume Game. Tell them the Tim Getty sent you. I'm liking this. I don't know if you guys see this. You probably don't because I'm the one tagged in it. There's a lot of people doing this. Good. And I appreciate it. You could also tweet at Mike Bethel and just tell him that Nick Scarpino, at Nick underscore Scarpino says, what's up? Yeah. Do just whatever you up. want because Mike Bethel is the homie and volume looks legitimately awesome. It's Greg, great. Did a great let's play on it. You can go check out the let's yeah. play we did on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. I'm waiting for Vita because I want to get Me on too. that. But man, it Me looks too. fun. Yeah, That's my Mike, intention. Met Mike a couple times. Met him at GDC and then at E3. He's a nice guy. Nice so, guy. So perverted mind though. Just... Are you talking about you? Wait, which one are we talking about? I think we're talking about you. Oh, yeah. Then definitely, yeah. yeah I prefer to mine. So the first topic of the day is what games are we most excited about? Which is a nice little segue because I'm pretty excited about volume on Vita. Yeah, volume. Because I've been waiting excited. for a Vita experience for all my damn plane flights mm -hmm. to all these conventions and all the crazy things we're doing. we got a lot coming up. What's our next thing? we got PAX. we got PAX. So we're going to be in Seattle week. for PAX Prime. Mm -hmm. well, there'll be a meet and greet there. <laughs> there will be meet and greet there. Yeah. We'll be having a... Uh, I don't think we've... Disclose the location of it just yet. Okay, but there but will we'll be a meet and greet. Out. We'll just follow us on Twitter. We'll figure that out. Um, there will be. We won't need a PAX badge for. We that. got a ton of everyone's in a ton of panels. Like Colin's in like nine panels, aren't you? How many panels are you doing? Uh, like three or four. Yeah, I'm hosting one, but we can't talk about it yet. We'll do ours. I'm doing a couple with Gamespot. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'll be doing quite a few panels. Yeah, it's it'll be, be fun. fun. And then directly after that, we have the Game Stop Expo. Right in We're Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Now we'll be there, I believe, uh, on the first and second of September. The show, I believe, is the second of September. If I'm getting my days right, it's the Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and we'll be live streaming all day, hosting their live stream. Uh, of a uh, ton of games, ton of fun content. We're also uh, going to do a games cast from the show floor. So, uh, if you have the fortune of attending that event, you can come see us live, hackle us, do whatever you want to yeah. do. Standard. It's a standard garbage truck. I'm excited for that. That uh, the topic for that games cast is just going to be one topic for the whole show. Right. It's going to be. Um, favorite game, GameStop memories. Like GameStop memories yeah. and stuff. And yeah. like, oh man, I can't wait There's to There's a lot. I have a, a lot of great ones too, yeah. especially from IGN because there were so many different eras of, of visiting the GameStop. Yeah. Uh, I, we'll your, save that your for Brennan the show. story about Metal Gear Solid 4 might be my favorite one. Oh, okay. Almost, we'll, but we'll save that, that for, we'll for that, that. But that'll be good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had a lot, of, a lot of that stuff coming up. And then later in September, we have TwitchCon, which is here. So I guess I don't need that. That one I'm really excited about too. I'm excited yeah. about, I'm actually really excited about PAG, uh, the next like three events we get to go to. Yeah. Um, what is going on down there? I don't there? even know. There's some knocky knocks going on. No, I want the window open. It's fine. It's who's, probably not coming. Who's yeah? Who has it come? Where's the knocking coming from? Someone's hammering something in upstairs. Or... I forgot to do the whole rigmarole because Nick's here. Yeah, and you know we just talk. And I'm sorry. Kind of I apologize. No, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But uh, this is the kind of funny games cast. It's pretty much the game over Greggy show, but we talk about video games. It's four topics and all that stuff. But if you want the whole show early, you can go to Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. There's a whole bunch of different tiers to get the show early, and for only a dollar a month, you get an extra episode of the show. Exclusive. 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 You should check that out. We do a lot of fun stuff. The last one was me, Nick, and Greg in a car that talking a about episode. road trip gaming. Yeah. So that was fun. You should yeah. definitely go check that stuff out. And also, we have the Kind of Funny forums. You should go to there, leave topics for the show, and we will get to them eventually. No, we'll get to them. Yeah. So going back to it, what games are we excited for? Because I already talked about volume. Excited for that one. What else? I'm excited for Metal Gear. I'm very excited for this. And it's this will be my first foray, not counting Grand Zeros, into an actual Metal Gear title. Now, some might think that's blasphemy because I should probably go back and play some of the other titles. But again, I sat down with Greg at dinner. We were at a, uh, not a PF Chang's, uh, BJ's, getting, uh, you know, he got some sort of uh, pizza. Pazuki. No, we didn't get a bazooki. It was too much food. But he got a, he got a buffalo chicken pizza. I got an ahi salad, and then I proceeded to eat half of his buffalo chicken pizza, like I do sometimes. You know, sometimes you order. I'll order something really healthy, and I'll eat all your French fries. Yeah, same thing. And I'm like, look, I I don't have time to go back and play all the other Metal Gears. Um, I'm like, should I? Wh where should I start here? And Greg's just, I'm like, can you bring me up to speed on what's going on with the story? Now I've asked that question before, and every time I ask it. It's a hilarious answer because the answer goes on way too long, and I'm nowhere closer to any clarity on the on the the events of the storyline that I was an hour before when I asked it. Um, but Greg kind of brought me up to speed, and I'm like, "This is such a weird and wacky story that I think I'm just gonna have to jump in." Honestly, yeah. Um, 
I mean, I just I don't I don't see myself going back and playing Guns of the Patriot. I don't see myself going back. You wouldn't and trying to. to find any of the other titles like one like one through three. I guess that were, you know, I'm just I, I don't know that I could do it. I can't do it. Yeah, I think you'll be okay. Um, I mean, it's obviously th- these games have been designed to really benefit people that have played through all of them. And sure. there's a lot of the little details and stuff that you get that you pick up on. You're like, oh my God, that's cool. A lot of fan service, especially the last couple games have been very fan service. Heavy. Right. But it's like, you don't need to know any of that stuff. And a lot of the games, the first time you play through them, you don't know what the hell's going on anyways. Right. It's not until you really kind of reflect on it and read about it and think about it and talk to other people. Right, right. You have those moments where you're like, oh, that's what was going on. Or else you're like, I don't fucking know. See, I think the impact of this one will, of course, be lessened by the fact that I don't have the wealth of knowledge that you guys do for the Metal Gear series. Um, But it's undeniably a cool game. And I think what I'm drawn to, aside from the sort of very Japanese manner of storytelling, you know, and uh, which I'm warming up to more and more. Because it's definitely not Western, right? It's definitely not your Hollywood style of like, I'm going to give you a really straight up story where we uh, feel the need to sort of set up characters and events before they happen so that when the payoff happens, boom, you get it, right? With Metal Gear, what I've noticed is that they'll just throw things at you and there'll be characters that you haven't seen maybe even in like 10 years. No setup, no reason why they're there. They're just there. And the excitement comes from the fact that they are, they're, you're being reintroduced into your world. Not necessarily like a Hollywood film where... You know, you get a little inkling of that character the first act, and then the second act, boom, that's when they show up, and then they got to fight. And th- you know, they'll just kind of throw stuff at you, and that's that. It's just a different mentality, and so I get past that. But it's got an undeniably cool sense of style to it. I mean, there is nothing quite as cool as Snake, right, mm-hmm. or Big Boss, or whichever the one you play in this game. <laughs> yeah, you're I, Big Boss. I don't really one. know. Um, and I, and I want to. And there's a lot to this game, right? As they as they progress, I mean, you've seen all the footage we've seen so far. The game is beautiful looking. It's got a really deep system of combat. So I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That that's a game I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm also looking forward to purchasing my first Vita, which will happen. Your first Vita, as yeah. if there will be another in the future. Well, I'm sure that Sony will make another handheld because the Vita was so successful mm. that how can they not? I'm surprised they haven't made one already, right, Colin? Yeah, I'm. I'm just shocking. Ooh. My question about this hammering noise, and I don't yeah, know if this, this is, is I, I, I don't know if this is so coming we're just through. To pretend it's not. Happening. I just don't know if this is coming through. What could you possibly be hammering consistently with no, just? I think he can just hear us, and he's like, "Fuck him! I'm gonna just." Where is it come? Where is, is the? Shut the window. I want to see if the window makes a difference. Where is this coming from? It's like right there. It's on the other side of the wall. Something's in the wall. Well, this is San Francisco, so the walls are like two inches apart from the neighbors. So it could be that the guy next door is putting up 30 frames. But, yeah, but he been, just isn't there's stopping. There's no stopping. If he's putting up the frames, it's, it's, it's just like I like, want to <laughs> see this. Because he's just going down the line, <laughs> hammering. Someone's like spotting and putting nail after nail after nail. This is a fucking... He might be adding. No, I mean, you still have to... This is bizarre. All right, we get it. We get it. We get it. All All right. right. So (laughs) (laughs) this is probably the most exciting time of the the year so far for me with video games where I haven't really cared about any of the games coming out this year. You know, when, um, damn, I'm totally blanking on the name, the parkour zombie game. Oh, Dying Dying Light. Dying Light. That came out, no real interest in it. I had a PS4, but I was like... Oh, it's too eh. bad. You should you should go back yeah, and play at least a few it, hours of it. It's a really cool game. No, I'm sure it's cool, but it's just not something that like grabs me where I'm like... I didn't, I'm not going to stop making videos and like planning stuff and doing all the things I like to play that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like There's certain games that I'm like, everything stops because I'm playing this. And then we get to Batman. I just never got into the other games, so I'm like, eh. It's not really something that grabs me like that. Metal Gear, I knew, was going to be the first huge game that I mm-hmm. need to jump into. The last month, I just haven't been able to to wait. It's like I'm constantly watching trailers and stuff. Just today, they released a trailer that was like a legacy trailer that went through the 28 years or whatever the hell on like PlayStation, like the legacy on PlayStation specifically. And I'm like, good lord, I have so much chills from this. Like this is going to be awesome, and this hammer is bothering just me so like much. I know I'm really trying to. Um, so forget- you're legitimately going to sit down. How how many hours do you think you'll play this? Can you think you're going to? I'm going to beat the game. I will beat, beat Metal Gear Five for sure. Um, but my, I don't know when I'm going to, and I've been stressing out a lot about this. Don't stress. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Don't. I mean, don't don't stress because you know, it's 
Actually, I don't. I have no idea how long the game is. I'm well, not even sure so I'm allowed to what I'm sure it's details. Very long. What I'm stressed I'm sure out it's about. Long. I mean, well, that, that's the thing. Is like I don't really care too much about all the side missions and all the like. Peace Walker turned me off because of all the base building and all mm-hmm. the like the gathering your troops and all that stuff. I don't want that. Like, and I, it sounds optional, and I think it was in Peace Walker as well. Like, I just want to do the story missions. Sure, get through. And uh, the other Metal Gear games were never that long, like fifteen hours max, right? Well, so, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that's about right. Fif- it, you can get through them a little quicker. You can get well, through them a little slower. I'm saying yeah, max, fi- yeah like, I'd say 15 hours is, is, is the good mean. If you do all some of, of the side things, you know, just yeah. kind of like leisurely go through because I'm not good at games, but um, 8 to 15 hours per per game. Some like I think I'm just one's a little shorter than that. But I would, you know what? It's it's sad we can't do this because it would be it would just take up way too much bandwidth. I would love to capture just both of our gameplay sessions for this. Just see <laughs> the complete. And total Buffoonery opposite ends of the spectrum of, of we how do. we either both of us plays because I know what's going to inevitably happen is I'm going to throw the ranking idea, the idea of getting an S rank on every mission out the window after the first three tries in the first mission, and I am just going to try to massacre every single person on every land, and that's just what's going to happen. Yeah, and I'm going to get there. I'm going to get a reputation for being a psychopath within the Metal Gear community, and I don't care. That's good. Yeah, I mean, see, Someone's I don't care the about the rankings at all. Like, to me, I'm, I'm in it for the story. I'm in it to sure. play through it. And the gameplay is fun to me. Yeah. I don't really care about doing all the extra stuff. Uh, but what I'm stressed about is this isn't the only game I want to play that's happening right now. But in addition to Metal Gear, another thing that I, I need to time how I'm going to play is you were telling me that I need to look into Until Dark. And, wow, Until Dawn. Yep. Because I mean, I remember when they showed it at PSX. And it had, what's her name, Hayden Pantaneri or yeah. whatever. And it looked cool. It looked like a fun little diversion of just, like, teen horror stuff. But I've kind of been writing it off as just, like, something that doesn't really interest me. And, like, I'm not going to um, look into it, especially when Metal Gear is coming out. Right. So, like, two weeks after, a week after. Um, but then you, there was the, that new trailer that came out that was, like, more of the, not the launch trailer, but, like, the actual... The trailer that shows off the game. Yeah, and choices can be made. They, they release the whole thing where it's like the choices can be made within the trailer, I think, and stuff like that, which is cool. Uh, yeah, the timing's really weird because th- a lot of people are really skeptical about Until Dawn, and I understand why that is because the game was rebooted. The game's been in development for a very long time. I'm surprised, actually, that Sony has let Supermassive work on this game. I saw this game for the first time, I think, in 2011. And, Damn. Um, in New York Comic Con. I think it was 2011. And at the time that I saw it, it was running on PS3 and it used PlayStation Move. And the game um, has totally been rebuilt and reworked now. And actually, a PlayStation experience, one of the coolest things in December when we were there, one of the coolest moments of, was when Supermassive came on stage and showed it and the crowd was freaking the fuck out, like uh-huh. making the choices for them as you go. Oh, yeah, um, that was cool. The timing is weird. I mean, I, I, I understand why people are skeptical of Until Dawn based on its August late August timing, the fact that two big games are coming out the next week and, and Metal Gear and Mad Max. So I think it is going to get buried a little bit, no pun intended. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's a game absolutely worth looking into. And well, so for me, looking at it, like watching this trailer, because I haven't seen anything about the game until, I mean, since uh, PSX, and it really looks like a uh, 90s teen horror movie. And I'm just like, yeah, I want to play that. I have to play it's that. It's like playing now. Scream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'm like, that looks that. fucking awesome. Nine, so yeah. I want to I want to definitely set aside some time to play that, hopefully before I get to Metal Gear. I just don't know how it's going to work with our travel thing. But then Mario Maker. Mario oh, motherfucking yeah. Maker. And we have Mario Maker, which is even which is even That worse. makes it so hard. It's like we literally have, uh, have it to play before it comes out. And it comes out officially September 11th. Mm-hmm. The it's 11th like, of September. Yeah, the 11th of, of <laughs> September. I love how they just keep saying that. Like, why don't you just move the date? All right, anyway, go ahead. Um, and man, that game is going to... I'm going to sing some hours into that. You know, I can't wait to play the just what's in it already, like the, the levels that they made, the 100 levels or whatever, plus all the, the downloaded levels from different people making it and making our own levels. And like, I want to think of something for us to do where we make levels for each other and play them and all that stuff. I, I mean, this, the sad thing is with me, my, my immediate thought is it's going to go to per, some sort of perverted land yeah or just make a, a level that's just the world, inside of a man's world five dick land yeah <laughs> world six genitalia anal big land. dick big Giant dick, dick land. <laughs> they call, dick they land. call this land the mushroom I'm, tip i'm oh excited i'm really excited about jesus about, kevin <laughs> i'm really excited about mario maker as well uh the, the we talked about it a little bit on colin and greg live but the unlocking system in the game is absolutely atrocious and stupid but other than that i uh I still can't get over how bad. But what is the unlocking? You have to play the game over a period of nine days to unlock everything. Why? And it doesn't matter if you've sunk in like five or ten minutes or ten hours in one day. You unlock the same amount of stuff. So it's like there's all the tools and different assets you can use to create the levels. And they didn't want to overwhelm players in the beginning by putting everything there. 
And uh, I mean, but it's like why? Because players are stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, it's like the difference between MS Paint and Photoshop. You know, like sure. just throwing Photoshop at someone and being like, "Figure it out." Isn't There's that a what, million but different isn't that things. What a tutorial is for? Like, couldn't they just have put the other things in there and then just got had like one tutorial level? It's like here's but, how you yeah, use all but these I mean, things. That's the difference between a tutorial for Mario or for uh, MS Paint and a tutorial for Photoshop. It's like that's hella shit. Sure. This way, it's like if you play little by little, you can kind of familiarize yourself with the different things. And I don't know if there's tutorials, but if there is, it's little chunks at a time. Now. I immediately, I was like, everyone's flipping out about it. I'm like, oh, I don't think it's that bad. Like, I think it's a good idea that they're, you know, introducing these things so people actually understand what all the different pieces are. And I was talking to Colin about it yesterday, and he totally won me over. This is stupid and ridiculous. Why is it a daily timed-based thing? So so the way they're unlocking it yeah. is you have to, Moore's unlocked each day. For nine days. Mm-hmm. And you have to play that day. It's not just nine days, so you don't just put it in and then not wait nine days. See, that's that's ridiculous, though, because that's not how people learn. Like, you can't you can't do that. No, it's, you have to be able to learn at your own pace, and that's why having a tutorial system for a game like that. I mean, you're basically learning a 3D. You're learning a game design program. And in, in, in doing that, there's got to be a better way to do it. No, like, it's just that my... my... I learned After Effects by watching tutorial after tutorial, step by step, and being able to do those at my own speed. What happens if you get to the end of the first day and you're ready for another one? You can't yeah. get it? Well, that's that's, a, that's the point, is that it's just... it's just, I, I have no problem with them locking everything if they want to lock everything. I'm just saying it should be based on time played, not days. So, like, if you play 10 hours in one day, you still unlock the same amount of content the next day that a person who played for one minute. Or it's not one minute, but five minutes or a half an hour. Or yeah, played. It's or just, even more of a it's classic... Not, it's nonsense. Like a classic game game design where it's like make three levels and it'll unlock more yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It should be right. contingent, on, well, it should be contingent yeah. on either hours played or more likely your accomplishments in the game. Yeah. I have no problem with them locking anything. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that based on days is stupid. But I, I, I too am really excited about Mario Maker. I'd be loath not to say that I'm excited about uh, Mad Max. Uh, I think that game looks really awesome. Avalanche is a great studio. Um, super, super interested to see that game. And I'm, I feel like it's it's flown under the radar because of Metal Gear and the fact that it comes out the same day. I feel bad for them. They probably should have moved it or pushed it up if they could, but they didn't. Um, so I think that game looks good. Uh, Fallout 4 is probably my most anticipated AAA game. Uh, really, really stoked uh, to play Fallout 4. I'm, and, I'm and not excited about it. Fallout. Here's, here's why I'm sad for you. is because we'll lose you. I know that when Fallout 4 comes out, you're done. Pretty much. You're done. Pretty much. Yeah. I can't Sorry wait. I didn't rep you. I can't I wait. No, it's fine. I can't wait to uh, to uh, get down, Portal. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, I can't <laughs> Suicide wait. Suicide die. <laughs> uh, so Fallout 4, I'm excited about. I'm excited. Uh, I mean, games further up. Uncharted Collection will be cool. This this. Uh, oh my fall. god! And there's yeah, that. The but, uh, but there's also Uncharted 4 in the spring, which is which is awesome. See, I look at this particular fall, and I'm not super overwhelmed. Like I, I look at it, and I'm like, okay, you're gonna get your Call of Duty. I don't care about that. Although I'll play the campaign, I'm not gonna like sink any more than a weekend into it. Uh, you're gonna get Battlefront, which I'm not gonna play because it's multiplayer. You're gonna get, um, you know, just, just some some various like st- Madden, some, some standard games that you're expecting. And then it's really just like Fallout 4 is the marquee title for me. If you own an Xbox One, obviously you're gonna want to look at uh, Gears, which is yeah. very soon. Uh, you're gonna look at Halo 5 and and Forza. I'm interested in the Halo 5 campaign. Tomb Raider and on Tomb Raider. Yeah, damn it. Um, so I mean, there are games to look forward to, but actually, looking forward, I'm even more excited about. Uh, 2016, Mighty Number no. Nine is going to come out in 2016 now. Now I've gone, so you hope. Uh, I'm super skeptical now about that game. I'm like really, <laughs> extremely skeptical about it uh, because this delay is just totally dubious and fucking ridiculous. Let's not forget that this game was supposed to pretty much come out imminently, mm-hmm. um, and it's being pushed back until next year so they can make the online work. I'm like, all right, that doesn't make any sense. There's something wrong with that game. Uh, so, so that's coming out. Obviously, we already mentioned Uncharted. Uh, four, which is super exciting. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Now that we're starting to learn a little bit more about it, sounds super super exciting. What is the deal with that? When's that coming out? Uh, like holiday 2016. Oh. So we'll see basically a lot of it. Probably E3. They'll probably yeah reveal yeah. everything. Uh, all will be revealed. Uh, so I mean, there's there's a but again in in the smaller game space. I mean, I'm excited to play Banner Saga on my Vita and like there, there's just a lot of smaller games as well. Yeah. But I'm kind of you know right now, uh, as far as what I can talk about what we're playing, I, I'm super excited about you know everyone getting their hands on Mega Man Legacy Collection because it's fucking awesome. Mm. I just sat on the edge of my bed last night playing it on PS4. I have an early copy of it on PS4, and we have it on Xbox One as well, but I'm obviously playing for trophies. And uh, I sat on my edge of my bed, and I'm like, I'm going to play Mega Man 1 for a little while, and then I just beat 1, and I beat 2, and I beat 3, like just sitting there. You're a crazy person. You are crazy. But that's awesome. Like That just shows how much you love those games. Like I get the same way playing the Mario games, like the old ones. Well, I'm just playing through, and I'm like, I I, I boot up All-Stars. And next thing I know, I'm halfway through three, and I'm like, Fuck. "Is it is it like looking at a painting? Do you think for you guys, like looking at a piece of art that you're like, I just want to just 
continue to consume this because to me, I mean, I guess I have movies that are like that and there are some, I just wouldn't think about going back and reading a book or playing a game that I've already beaten. You know, I think once I'm done, I'm like, I'm done. I don't know for you guys is, is it is, or is it just all nostalgia where you're like, or is it just great? Is it just a great game with great I mean, replayability? I think it's, it's a mix. It depends on the games. Like I wouldn't go back and play everything. It's just sure. there's certain keystones that I'm like, yeah, because usually I'm just like, I'm one and done, just over it. Like mm-hmm. when I beat the games, but a lot of these older ones, they're just I love them. Yeah, they're just master classes on gameplay. I think I think they're just fun to play. Yeah. It's like putting on an old glove. It's like it's it's testing testing muscle memory you developed 25 years ago at times. It's 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 fun. I mean that's why I like you know I just beat Arkham Knight finally. And, uh, you did? Yeah. And I, What'd you I, think? It, it's a good game. I like yeah. it. I think it's overrated, but I think it's a good game. Um, I, 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 everyone's, a lot of people are talking about like it's game of the year, and it was like, I'm like, it's not on, on a storytelling level and on a character level, it's awesome. I think it's great. On a gameplay mm-hmm. level, I wasn't really that impressed, to be honest. Um, I think it's fine. I, I, it's definitely not my favorite game of the year, but I'm glad I beat it. The reason I brought up Arkham Knight was not to discuss that or, or have a controversy about that, which was more to say that's a one and done game for me where I was like, I beat it and immediately deleted it off my system. I'm like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Never going back. Right. So it's, uh, especially with all that Riddler shit, I have no patience for that. No, I'm not doing that. Stuff um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that more about games today. Although, like, Uncharted Collection is a great example of I, I, I platinumed all those Uncharted games, and I'm going to platinum again. It's not even like I'm going to just sit and play them. I'm going to get the platinum trophy in those games again. You are so, crazy. So but it's but they're I'm awesome. So they're, 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 those, those games, games are masterpieces. You know, it's different than just playing a game to play it or a game that's fun or good. There are lots of good games, mm-hmm. but there are fantastic games and those are the games that you'll always go back to i will go back to uncharted again in 20 years and i'm sure it'll be just as good yeah, yeah. i just All think right. it's crazy that uh with these games now i i feel like it's going from nothing to so much at once like this september is about to be insane even if it is just a handful of games coming out right in the beginning or like late august but like what do crazy, we have in man. september well there's uh so until dawn is a week before september okay and then we got um When's Metal Gear coming? Metal out? Gear September first. September 1st. Mad Max is September first. Jesus. Mario Maker's the eleventh of September, and um, <laughs> then it, Gears is in there. Forts is in there. Yeah. I think. Damn. Like, um, yeah, there are there are a lot, quite a few triple A triple A games coming out. And then right into October, we got Uncharted, and we got all this other stuff. It's like, man, it's a lot be good. going on. It's gonna be good. I mean, that's the way it always goes. We just we're so again hyper sensitive to what the the day to day happenings in the industry that we're used to it being slow and it's just this is the normal like frankly I look at this fall and I'm like it's busy but I f- I remember much busier falls than this yeah. I feel like actually Q1 and the first half of Q2 have become crazy out of nowhere the last few years and that's kind of where a lot of games that are pushed out either because they need more time or wisely because they're going to get crushed. Um, you know, that's kind of, yeah. well, you know, that's why I'm surprised that I, I mean, I'm, I I kind of exp- anticipated some more delays in the fall from f- get away from Fallout. We haven't been seeing those yet. And I'm so, I'm shocked by that because Fallout's going to squash a lot of games. <laughs> like, it's just a lot of people are like, you're overestimating how good Fallout's going to sell. And so I'm like, no, no, I'm not. Fallout 4 is going to sell millions and millions of copies. And and uh, it's going to do it very easily. And anything around it is going to suffer, whether it suffers a little or a lot. I mean, it remains to be seen. But I was surprised that they're sticking with that Tomb Raider release date on Xbox One and Xbox 360 on November 10th. It's the same day Fallout comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, that's suicidal. Like, I don't understand like why you would do something like that. Because given the option and the $60 in your pocket, and most people don't have the time or maybe even the means to buy multiple games at the same time, you're going to buy Fallout, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I presume that's like a 9 out of 10 kind of... I don't like know 9 if out of 10 that people that are, that, are, that are into games or would prefer Fallout, you would, you would assume, but maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I think Tomb Raider has a slightly higher market share than that. I'm so, it has a great market share. I'm just saying there are games that that crush everything around mm-hmm. it, and I feel like that's strange to me. But yeah. 